Welcome to a minted Christmas special at Style in the City, Greater Manchester's only dedicated fashion and beauty programme. Coming up this week, the programme is packed full of helpful tips and advice. Andrew Barnes here with a masterclass in achieving the perfect curl. Makeup artist Emma Ekpo's talking us through skincare. I catch up with a top fake tan expert to find out how to get the perfect application. Me and the team have got all the tips you need to ensure you'll be striking the perfect pose. And our panel of experts answer Greater Manchester's style dilemmas. Can't get your head around the art of hairstyling? Style in the City's resident hairdresser, Andrew Vaughan, is here to help. And this week, he's showing us how to get the perfect wave. Today with Grace, what we're going to do, we're going to create the perfect wave. By doing that, we're going to start at the back of the head and work our way through to the front. And we're going to use the GHD straighteners. First of all, we're going to take inch and a half, inch and a half sections, which is just like little squares. And uh, we're going to work our way through the first technique. Depending on how much rotation you use in the straighteners, depending on how much curl you get. So first of all, straighteners in, one rotation, and just pull straight out. And smooth down. That's one wave. I'm working on to the next section. Straighteners in, one rotation, and pull out. When you are pulling the straighteners out, it's important to bring them away from the head. Rotate, elevate, and pull straight out. So again, working with little sections, just nice and clean. So basically in, one rotation, elevate, and just pull straight out. Don't squeeze too tight, otherwise you're gonna trap the hair and you're gonna get little lines and little marks. You want to smooth the hair through the straightness. Now why'd you wanna go and put stars in their eyes? It's the same old story, well they just didn't realize. And it's a long way to come from your private bedroom dance routines. On Saturday nights, drunk the dreams. Then what you'd normally do is run the fingers through and then just sort of separate the hair out a little bit. Any areas that, which you feel aren't quite wavy enough, just obviously when the hair's cool, just go back and redo it. Now just finishing with a little bit of spray. So there we have it. The perfect wave. Laura Mercier makeup artist Emma Ekpo is at Harvey Nichols to bring us all her top tips on makeup application. And this week she begins with skin preparation. What we've done with Sarah, we've actually cleansed the skin with an oil. Initially the thinking was with oils, they overclog the skin and will destroy the makeup finish. But we now know the oils help keep the skin nice and supple. So uh, oils are what we've used. There are lots of other new things around where you can actually hydrate the skin with a hydrating water. After that, we added a moisturiser that has an SPF, all right? So SPFs are the way to go. So we've done that, but just to make sure that everything doesn't disturb the makeup finish, we're going to add a base. Lots of companies do these. They're nice and thin, and for the money, you think, well, why should I buy one? But what a lot of people don't actually take account for is heat. The skin is hot, and it is not a problem if your makeup starts to melt. It's a natural function of the skin. So what these bases do, they suspend the foundation above the skin and she has a longer chance of retaining the foundation. We also added a little bit of eye cream as well. It's always good to give the uh, under eye area a bit of attention. A lot of people tend to look at the under eye as being covered by your general moisturiser. Not totally true. Another thing I was saying to Sarah as well, a lot of ladies do not change their winter skincare regime to their summer one. Why not? You know, at the end of the day, in the summer, you're a little bit more oily. In the winter, a little bit more dry. Up next, it's a masterclass with beautician Christine, who this week is showing us the best way to achieve fabulous nails. When you come to put your polish on, now there's, there's quite a few colours now on the market. The main colours are is your, your deep purples now and your deep reds and your deep blues and blacks and silver and also glitzy um, polishes as well. But the main thing that we need to do first is obviously look at, looking at the condition of your nails. If they are quite dry, you can actually put a treatment on them. 
So I'm going to put a treatment on on your nails, but you'll also act as your base coat. And the reason to put your base coat on is that to stop your nail, stop the actual colours discolouring your nails, and also to stop them drying out as well. Um, so in the treatment, it's um, calcium, it's calcium base, and this will help to build up the calcium levels in the in the nails, and also to help to make them stronger. Literally sure try not to go into the cuticle area. The colour we're going to choose is the purple because um, the purple is one of the in colours at the moment and it's really nice. It goes with most things as well, so you shouldn't have any problems. So the key is to actually um, put your nail polish on is to try and do three strokes, one in the middle and one at the sides and one at the other side because if you actually just put it on and you, you, you've no, no direction where you're going, you can tend to get in certain parts a lot thicker than the other so you, you are best trying to follow a nice pattern and if you do that you get a really nice smooth finish when you take it out of the bottle obviously make sure that your nail, the nail polish hasn't over flooded the, the actual brush because if you do it'll just go on it'll just run into the cuticle area once you put the nail polish on you can actually leave your nails to sort of dry a little bit for a couple of minutes they don't actually have to be perfectly dry but um, dry enough that so when you put the top coat on it's not dragging the nail polish off Okay. And all you need is a very fine coat of the top coat on. This will give it a really good shine and it will it will make the nails nail polish actually a lot harder so it will stay in a lot longer. Okay. Right, I know that you're probably doing this at home and um, I know everyone's always saying, oh how could I do my other hand? One hand's always better than the other. Unfortunately, it's just pure practice and if I had a tip, I would give it to you, but it's just practicing. Still to come on Style in the City, if you're fed up with getting a streaky orange looking tan, then stay tuned for a guide to the perfect application. If you want to avoid those unflattering pictures, then stay tuned for our guide to posing for the perfect picture. And our expert panel answers some of Manchester's burning questions. Welcome back to Stan in the City. And since winter is in full flow and our summer tans have well and truly faded, many of us will be looking to hit the bottle. A fake tan, that is. In recent years, we've seen a boom in sales of self-tanning products and much of this is down to consumers trying to emulate celebrities' tanned appearance. The highest consumers of fake tan in the UK are single women between 15 and 35 and, despite the best efforts of the media to promote the use of pale skin models, consumers still associate a tan with looking good. Research into the manufacture of self-tans has led to improvements such as them providing a more natural, golden tan and a reduction in the strong smell usually associated with it. I went along to House of Fraser on Deansgate to meet an expert from Zentan, one of the leading fake tan suppliers. So Natalie, when it comes to false fake tan, it's an enigma to me. So what are the best ways of applying it? What you've got to do, you've got to choose the right tan, the right product. If you chose, I don't know, for example, the wrong lipstick, you can take it off. If you chose the wrong tan, a tan that maybe turned you orange, that dried out the skin, that made your skin go all patchy, streaky, you stuck with it for a week. You're hiding away and it's absolutely awful. I always say, you've got to make sure the tone's right. Choose a tone that suits a whole range of skin tones, fair skin, dark skin. Choose an olive tone. How would I know if it had an olive undertone? The, the company should market it, and it's marketing, and should it's obviously explain it's one of its USPs. And you can actually see as well, can you see this product? It's got an olive undertone, and you do not go orange. No matter how fair, how dark skin you are naturally, you will never, ever go orange with it. Okay, so what are the best ways of applying it to your knees and your feet? Well, for the areas like your feet and your ankles and your knees, although you've got a tan with moisturisers in, I still apply a little bit of unperfumed moisturiser to those areas because what you want to do, you want to dilute it, you want to dilute the tan of air. So for things like exfoliation yes. and shaving, yes. how far in advance? What I would do, I would shave or wax 24 hours before you've applied your tan. 
because obviously shaving and waxing it opens up your pores. So do it 24 hours before. Exfoliation again, the morning before or the night before is absolutely sufficient. If you want to do it just before applying your tan, it's absolutely sufficient. And if you've got a special occasion, a wedding, I don't know, how many days in advance should you apply this false tan? I'd start, say, two days before, OK? If it's on a Saturday, the wedding, I'd go for the Thursday. Some girls, if they are very, very fair, like to apply a couple of layers on consecutive days. So choose a tan that has got the instant colour and blends in easily. Dries quickly, you can put your clothes on, you can go out to work, and your tan's done. And obviously it will last you. Again, getting back to the moisturisers, choose a tan that's packed with moisturisers. The more moisturisers it's got in there, the longer it will last on the skin, the less chances you've got of streaking. And moving up now from your body to your face, what's the best way of applying that? OK, what we do is we cleanse the face, OK? Uh, also exfoliate the face if you apply tan quite often to your face. Cotton pad, squirt the tanner on the pad and just simply apply on the face, very neat, very evenly. Again, getting that tan with an olive undertone, not an orange or a green undertone that's going to leave you look muddy or orangey, you guaranteed that olive colour. Now, I always get a little bit of a build-up on my eyebrow. What I would do is maybe put in Vaseline on as you're applying, or a very fine layer of Vaseline, or again, on perfume moisturiser to stop it. And does the same thing apply to your hairline? Yeah, put a headband on to stop it, so you, you know you can protect the hair, put some moisture and just protect it. So if you had to give me your top tips to, for applying tan? I always start with the feet. The feet are the most trickiest area. Get them out of the way first. Apply your moisturiser on your feet. I get a cotton pad and then I'm very careful, apply it to the foot area, around the toes, around the foot. So you don't do that with your hands, you do I the do cotton not. pad? I do not. It's a lot easier with a cotton pad or a cosmetic sponge, it's so much easier. The feet are very tricky. Then take the tan, whether you choose your hands or a mitt to apply, and glide it up the body. And then again, doing the hands. A lot of people say to me, hands are very difficult. I just simply get a cotton pad, squirt the tan in once the hands are dry, and apply it and it's very very smooth how do you stop it going into your knuckles though it's the tan if the tan's not got moisturizers in it will sit in there if the tan's packed with moisturizers it will not sit in right it's absolutely fat also a brilliant tip for the back if you've got no one to do your back for you get a piece of cling film put three dots of tan on it and do that with your back and it's brilliant for getting your back done Nice and a simple, simple way to do it, really. I like that. I like Very that tip. Too. So if you wake up the next morning and for some reason you've just gone a little bit wrong in some areas and it's a bit, uh, how do we get rid of it? The easiest way is a really, really hot bath. Exfoliator, mix exfoliator and just really try and soak it off in the bath for as long as you can. As long as you can bear a hot bath do it that way that's the easiest way but getting back to you've got to choose the right product and if you choose the right product you won't go wrong natalie thanks so much for all the advice i can only hope the women of greater manchester oh and the men are going to be bronzed beauties if your festive photos were anything like mine last year you were looking huge you were blinking your eyes were red oh hideous so Stan in the City have enlisted the help of a top photographer to give us her top tips to make us all look fabulous Okay, girls, quick picture. Now, Gemma, you have to remember that the camera adds £10 to you, okay. so it's always a good idea to stand slightly side on and kick your toe out just like that. So my, ca my, fo my foot pointing towards the camera? Yep. Okay. And it also gives you a nice S shape. There you go. Lovely. Okay, girls, quick picture. Oh dear, Gemma. <laughs> Why is it all with you me? Look, you look really awkward. Now, it's a good idea. You can either put your hand on your hip, just like that. Yeah. You can use one of your friends to lean on. Yeah. Lower your shoulders and take some deep breaths because that gives you a good shape. Okay, right. I've taken that on board. <laughs> there we go. Ready, girls? You got it. Ah. Okay, another picture, girls. Jemmy, you've got a strained grin. Oh. And if you're concerned about having a double chin, put your tongue on the roof of your mouth as the picture's being taken yeah. and chin slightly down. Okay. Hmm. It does work, actually, doesn't it? Try again. Um, okay, girls, another picture. 
Now, Jamie, you're blinking on that one. Can't get it right. A good tip is, have your photographer say on three. One, two, three, then you know, and you're not standing there with a grin pasted to your face. So your counts is three, not us? Yes. Right, okay, we're going to get it this time, girl. Well, you got it, I didn't get it. <laughs> right, you ready, girls? One, two, three. So if you really want to go for it, the red carpet pose suits most girls. Now why don't you all show me what you think the red carpet pose is. No, no, no. <laughs> what it is, slightly over your shoulder, winning smile. Oh, I see, we see the soap stars doing this. Right, girls, come on. Big, beaming, megawatt smile. Very glamorous. <laughs> There you go, top tips to look picture perfect this Christmas. But don't forget, you've got to look like you're having some fun. Oh, oh, oh. Time now for our style surgery, where personal shopper Ben Maxfield, makeup artist Siobhan Trow and hairdresser Ellie Stabell are all poised to answer Manchester's style dilemmas. When picking moisturisers or makeup for men, how do you know? Do you go for a brand? Do you go for a name you recognise, like Beckham if you bring something out? Or do you go for a trusted name like L'Oreal or Clinique? Is moisturiser moisturiser or does it make a difference to pay that extra £10, £20 a month? Is, are you significantly going to see any, any better? A very interesting question, Siobhan. Mm. Should you go for the celebrity endorsed products or should you get out there and see what's on, on the high street? There's a massive range for men now and there's a great selection. What I would suggest is go somewhere and get some expert advice for what you actually need. By paying the extra little bit of money you will get a better quality of ingredients. You're not necessarily paying for the packaging. Um, but there's some fantastic things out on the high street, but there's some great things in the department stores as well. So it's just not being scared to ask yeah. and get advice? Yeah, go get some expert advice and for what you need. And you don't pay for that advice, people no. get intimidated sometimes. Yeah. They're there to help you. Perfect, thank you very much. Um, Ellie, a question for you here from uh, Jane Carter, 40, from Cheadle. Um, she's got quite bad dandruff and it's getting to the point where it's becoming embarrassing. She's tried numerous products uh, but nothing seems to work. Do you have any hints or tips or products you should be using? Um, first of all, check it is dandruff. dandruff. Dandruff will be kind of smelly and yellow and horrible and obviously that is something that you need to see either a trichologist, someone who deals with hair and scalp or a doctor. And you have to have some expert advice. If it is just a matter of flaky, dry skin, it could be that the product's not suitable for you that you're using. It could be that you need a little bit more moisture on your scalp. Um, there's several products out there. Um, one from Philip Kingsley, who is a um, trichologist. He's got quite a few good ranges for that type of scalp, and also Kerastas and uh, Weller all do. So I'll probably go, I'll go around and get some expert advice. So is that something you could ask your hairdresser? Would they you be able to tell you? could ask your hairdresser and they'd be able to tell you the difference between flaky scalp and dandruff. I think a lot of these adverts kind of show that flaky scalp is dandruff and it's completely different. Oh, right. Perfect. Thank you very much. Siobhan, it's an email question for you. This is from Susie Goldsmith and she's 23 from Haywood. She's got very sensitive skin, uh, so sometimes she shies away from wearing makeup. Uh, what's the best way to prepare skin for makeup and application techniques? If you uh, have sensitive skin, I would always use oil-free moisturiser and then that's not going to upset your skin. Um, the best product I can suggest is a primer, so that will give you a barrier between your skin and your makeup, so your makeup, whichever you choose, is not going to irritate the skin. But um, the mineral powders are fantastic for a sensitive skin. They'll give some coverage, they'll give the skin a nice healthy glow and they won't irritate. They're actually quite beneficial to the skin. Okay, lovely, thank you. Ellie, uh, an email question for you here from Becky Johnson, 29, from Sale. Um, I'm constantly changing my hairstyle to fit current trends and styles, but I seem to have come to a standstill at the moment. My hair is currently a long bob. Oh, actually, this could be my question, couldn't it? Do you have any tips for a new hairstyle? Um, it always depends on suitability. You know, I think you can carry off something quite boring and look striking, depending if it suits you. Um, a lot of the latest looks at the moment that we're working with are very, um, there's a lot of flat backs, so like a lot, quite a bit of hair cut away from the back of the hair, heavier through to the front. We're not in the traditional like bob shape, 
kind of frame in the face a little bit more. I think at the moment I would definitely always go for your strong geometric looks again. All of those kind of bond out Camden look has definitely fizzled out now. Uh, everything's with the fashion and everything, makeup and everything, it rounds up to a definite, very strong but elegant look. Oh, interesting. Thank mm. you very much. Let's uh, have a final look at the screen. I would think what's the best to give you, you know, a more fuller cleavage, what sort of top, you know, that shows you more if you're more flat-chested. Then flat-chested ladies everywhere want to know the answer to this one. Um, the best thing I can say is find a place that fits bras uh, and find a good push-up bra, the best, that is going to give you the most lift. And then a deep V and where it just hits the bra, so then you're going to get a fuller cleavage. Um, or maybe if you can find a top that's patterned around this area and not so much around here, that's going to make that area look a little bit bigger. So. OK, thank you very much indeed. Thank you to all of the team today. Thanks. And if you've got a style dilemma you'd like to put to our panel, please email us at style at channelm.co.uk. For more information on items featured in this week's show, to catch the programme online or to contact the Style in the City team, visit our website channelm.co.uk slash lifestyle. Competition time now and how do you fancy winning a hamper of luxury goodies to enjoy in the new year? The prize includes a £250 voucher towards an item of jewellery at Boodles, a brand new hairstyle courtesy of Trevor Sorby's new salon, Champagne afternoon tea to enjoy at the five-star Lowry Hotel. His and hers Tom Ford aftershave and perfume. A Barnet hairdressing gift box. A full body massage or a facial to enjoy at the Radisson Hotel's Siena Spa. And a chauffeur-driven limo for a night courtesy of Bee's Knees. To win, simply text the answer to the following question. What pie is traditionally left out on Christmas Eve for Father Christmas? Is it A, a mince pie? B, steak and kidney pie, or C, custard pie. Text style followed by your choice of answer A, B, or C to 88821. Entries cost £1 plus your standard network charge. Players must be 16 and over and lines close at midnight on Tuesday the 6th of January. You can find more details on the terms and conditions on our website. That's it for this week, but coming up next week... I check out the brand new Vivian Westwood store and try on some of her collection. And I catch up with the founder of Ringspun to get his take on the history of fashion in Manchester. 